For many years, Morgan Freeman has captivated audiences with his remarkable performances, earning a place as one of the most cherished figures in contemporary American cinema. Born in 1937 in Memphis, Tennessee, Freeman briefly served in the U.S. Air Force during the 1950s before embarking on his acting career in the 1960s. His first significant role came in 1971 when he portrayed Easy Reader on The Electric Company, an educational children's television series in which he appeared in an impressive 780 episodes. In the 1980s, Freeman transitioned to more serious and adult-oriented roles, showcasing his talent in iconic films such as Brubaker, Driving Miss Daisy, and The Shawshank Redemption. He received his first Oscar nomination in 1988 for Street Smart and won the prestigious award in 2005 for his performance in The Million Dollar Baby. Freeman is one of the few actors with the versatility to portray a wide range of characters, from a Civil War soldier in Glory to a school principal in A Lean on Me, and even the civil rights leader Nelson Mandela in Invictus. Despite enjoying some of the greatest successes Hollywood has to offer, Freeman's life has not been without its challenges. He has faced racism throughout his life and has endured the loss of many loved ones, including one to a tragic act of violence. Nevertheless, Freeman has persevered, continuing to create some of the most enduring films in cinema history, which speaks volumes about his remarkable character. On June 1, 1937, Mamie Edna Revere Freeman and Morgan Porterfield Freeman Sr. celebrated the arrival of their son, Morgan Freeman Jr., in Memphis, Tennessee. When he was two years old, his parents relocated to Chicago in search of improved economic opportunities, leaving him in the care of his grandmother in Mississippi. This move was motivated by the pervasive legal racism in the South at that time, which severely restricted their employment options. For the subsequent four years, Morgan Jr. was raised in Mississippi during an era when Jim Crow laws were still enforced. These laws included prohibitions against discussing social equality between black and white individuals, the illegality of interracial marriage, and a grossly unequal educational system. In certain school districts, Funding for schools attended by black children, including Morgan Jr., was intentionally inadequate, providing only enough resources to operate for four months instead of the standard nine. At the age of six, Morgan Jr. attended a school in Greenwood, Mississippi, which was so poorly funded that it consisted of just one room, as noted by Gina DeRangelis in A Morgan Freeman. Freeman later reflected on Mississippi as a society that was purposefully, obviously, openly segregated, although he acknowledged that his youthful naivety somewhat shielded him from the harsh realities of racism. Although he would eventually leave the oppressive environment of Jim Crow, his formative years in Mississippi undeniably shaped his life. When Morgan Freeman was only two years old, he moved in with his grandmother, Evelyn Freeman, in Charleston, Mississippi. For the next four years, he shared his grandmother's home with his older sister, Iris Virginia Freeman. During the summers, he would visit his parents in Chicago, but every fall, he eagerly returned to his grandma's house to start the new school year. Unfortunately, this happy chapter ended when Morgan was six, as he lost his beloved grandmother. The loss was heartbreaking for him, and it meant he had to move permanently to Chicago to live with his parents. Morgan found the cold Chicago winters difficult to bear, especially after the warm climate of Mississippi, and he struggled to adjust to the bustling city life that was so different from his peaceful rural upbringing in Charleston. In Chicago, Morgan's family settled in the Bronzeville neighborhood on the south side. This area had experienced significant violence just a few decades earlier during the race riots of the Red Summer of 1919 and was facing economic challenges by the time Morgan arrived in the 1940s. He cherished his memories of Mississippi far more than his time in Chicago, primarily because he was surrounded by his grandmother and enjoyed life there much more. He often thought that he might have never left Mississippi if it weren't for her passing. It may seem surprising given his current image, but Morgan Freeman was once part of a street gang. 
This was a consequence of his upbringing on the south side of Chicago, an area plagued by violence, which he described as an untenable situation. Freeman shared that he had to go through some initiation rituals that involved committing crimes, but he never truly embraced that lifestyle and detested the violence that came with it. The gang life was so harsh that there were times Freeman longed to return to Mississippi, even if it meant facing the blatant racism of the Jim Crow era. As mentioned by Gina DeAngelis in Morgan Freeman, his gang was called the Spiders. He joined reluctantly, seeking the protection that the gang provided in his tough neighborhood. Although he wasn't a full-fledged member, he did enough to be associated with them and gain their support. If it had been up to Freeman, he would have preferred to focus on his studies and keep to himself, but that wasn't a feasible option in his environment. Luckily for him, he managed to avoid serious legal troubles, which allowed him to pursue his film career. 1. One of the most heartbreaking aspects of Morgan Freeman Jr.'s early life was his troubled relationship with his father, Morgan Freeman Sr. It wasn't until he turned six, during Thanksgiving, that Morgan Jr. met his father for the first time while he was on leave from World War II. Unfortunately, the encounter was far from positive, with Morgan Jr. describing his father as a mean man. This meeting coincided with the passing of Morgan Jr.'s grandmother, leading him to temporarily stay with his father, who had returned from the military after divorcing Morgan Jr.'s mother. Morgan Jr. referred to this period as one of the really low points in his life, expressing that he had never liked him. The situation was so difficult that Morgan Jr. only spent six months living with his father before he moved back in with his mother, seeing his dad infrequently afterward. The rare visits were primarily for haircuts, since his father was a barber, and to collect a few dollars to help his struggling mother, but Morgan Jr. dreaded these encounters. Morgan Sr. passed away in 1961 at the young age of 47 due to liver cirrhosis from years of heavy drinking. At just 24 years old, Morgan Jr. lost his father, and they never had the chance to mend their relationship. After graduating from high school, Morgan Freeman chose not to pursue his acting dreams right away. He received a scholarship to join the theater program at Jackson State University, but decided to take a different path by enlisting in the U.S. Air Force. This decision was practical for Freeman, as he wanted to leave Mississippi and believed a military career would be more stable than acting. With many family members having served, this also influenced his choice, and he spent nearly four years in the service. Freeman had hopes of becoming a jet fighter pilot, but he faced significant obstacles due to the racism prevalent during the 1950s, long before the Civil Rights Act of 1964 would bring about legal equality. Despite performing well and achieving high test scores, he was unable to rise above the position of radar mechanic, attributing his lack of opportunity to his race. In addition to being denied the chance to fly, Freeman encountered racist remarks from his superiors, who perpetuated stereotypes about black individuals. He ultimately left the Air Force in 1959, just before the US became involved in the Vietnam War. In the 1970s, Morgan Freeman seemed poised for fame after securing the role of Easy Rider on The Electric Company, but his personal life was facing challenges. In a 1989 interview with the Washington Post, Freeman shared that while he loved being part of the show and appreciated his co-stars, it led him to struggle with alcoholism. He felt frustrated by being recognized primarily as Easy Rider rather than as the talented actor Morgan Freeman. His drinking escalated from casual lunches to consuming alcohol at home after filming, with his choice of drinks shifting from martinis to scotch and whiskey. At one point, he was consuming several quarts of whiskey weekly, leading to blackouts. This heavy drinking not only took a toll on his health, but also strained his marriage, which ultimately ended in divorce in 1979. He managed to quit drinking in the mid-1970s, just before the electric company O concluded. As his career progressed, Freeman drew from his experiences with alcoholism when portraying a substance use counselor in the 1988 film Clean and Sober. He has since turned to marijuana, which has helped him maintain his acting career.
On August 3, 2008, Morgan Freeman faced one of the most challenging moments of his life when he was involved in a serious car accident in Charleston, Mississippi. At the age of 71, he was rushed to the hospital with injuries that included a broken arm and elbow. Fortunately, he survived the crash, which saw his vehicle roll multiple times into a ditch. The aftermath of the accident brought additional complications for Freeman, as the passenger in his car, Demoris Meyer, filed a lawsuit against him. The two reached a settlement out of court in 2009, but the specifics of the agreement were never disclosed to the public. Sadly, the crash left Freeman with a chronic condition in his right hand known as fibromyalgia. This painful disorder is not well understood and currently has no cure, according to the National Institute of Health. In a 2012 interview with Esquire, Freeman candidly shared his experience with the condition, describing the pain as excruciating and radiating up and down the arm. 1. For many parents, the thought of losing a child to a tragic accident is their worst nightmare. Unfortunately, Morgan Freeman faced this heart-wrenching reality when his step-granddaughter, Edina Hines, was murdered in a brutal incident in August 2015. Edina was the step-granddaughter of Freeman through his first ex-wife, Jeanette Bradshaw, who was her grandmother before Freeman's marriage. It was during his second marriage to Myrna Colley that Edina came to live with them, as her mother, Dina, was reportedly having difficulties, and Freeman took on a significant role in her upbringing. On August 16, 2015, Edina was found with multiple stab wounds inflicted by her boyfriend, Lamar Davenport. She was declared dead later that morning at the hospital, and Davenport was taken into custody. Investigators later revealed that he was under the influence of the drug fencyclidine, or PCP, at the time of the incident. Although he was acquitted of murder, he was convicted of manslaughter and received a 20-year prison sentence. Freeman was understandably devastated by the shocking loss of Edina. In a heartfelt statement to People, he expressed his sorrow, saying, her star will continue to shine bright in our hearts. Edina was just 33 years old when her life was tragically cut short. She had briefly pursued a career in acting, following in the footsteps of her famous step-grandfather. Morgan Freeman's experience with marriage and divorce is quite poignant, reflecting the complexities of love, commitment, and the challenges that can arise in long-term relationships. Freeman, a celebrated actor and cultural icon, has been married twice. His first marriage to Janetta Dare Bradshaw lasted for over 12 years, from 1967 to 1979, and produced a daughter, Dina. The couple faced the typical struggles that many couples encounter, but ultimately, they decided to part ways, highlighting the reality that not all relationships withstand the test of time. Freeman's second marriage to Myrna Colley began in 1984 and lasted until their separation in 2007, followed by a divorce finalized in 2010. This relationship was marked by both love and challenges, including the pressures of Freeman's rising fame and the complexities of blending families. The couple had no children together, but they shared a deep bond that was evident in their years together. However, as with many marriages, they faced difficulties that led to their eventual split. Freeman's reflections on his marriages reveal a man who has experienced both the joys and sorrows of love. He has spoken about the importance of communication and understanding in relationships, emphasizing that even the strongest bonds can be tested. His journey through marriage and divorce serves as a reminder that love is often accompanied by challenges and that personal growth can emerge from the pain of separation. In interviews, Freeman has expressed a sense of gratitude for the lessons learned through his relationships, acknowledging that each experience has shaped him into the person he is today. His story resonates with many who have navigated the complexities of love and loss, making his experiences not just personal, but universally relatable. Ultimately, Morgan Freeman's journey through marriage and divorce is a poignant testament to the intricacies of human relationships, illustrating that even in the face of heartache, there is always an opportunity for growth and understanding. Morgan Freeman, the acclaimed actor and filmmaker, has remained active in various projects and endeavors. 
As of my last update in October 2023, he has continued to work in film and television, often taking on roles that showcase his distinctive voice and commanding presence. Freeman has also been involved in documentary projects, lending his narration skills to various educational and nature-themed programs. In addition to his acting career, Freeman has been known for his philanthropic efforts and advocacy work, particularly in areas related to education, the arts, and social justice. He has often spoken out on important issues and has used his platform to raise awareness about various causes. Freeman has also been involved in the production side of the industry, working on projects that align with his interests and values. His passion for storytelling and commitment to quality filmmaking continue to drive his career. For the most current updates on Morgan Freeman's activities, including any new film releases or public appearances, it would be best to check recent news articles or his official social media channels.